They roam the loop, just like on the back of your dog. H is for one of the 50 states. What's the first state in you? A. Well, whatever the first state is, that's A on your money. That lets you know where the money was printed. And each has a number of the letter of the alphabet. There's 26 alphabets in, uh, letters in this alphabet. So when you see H5, it's telling you that it's and from this city or whatever, and this is the letter we started with, and it's going off the alphabet. It's the same way, according to Revelation, it's putting it down. This is going to identify the Antichrist. But I ain't going to tell you who he is, because until you see that, you'll keep on doing the same wicked stuff you've been doing. The Most High said, I'm going to keep you on your toes. I'm going to send you false ones. You're going to look at them and think that that's them? No, you got to go every word to the left. 100% truth. It has to be that. And, and that's going to be proven with two witnesses. The Most High said it will get done with two witnesses that will make it 100%. That's why the church, they quote one scripture. And we're going to go to John 15. And the Lord said, that's what he said. Church, do you agree? Yes, I agree. <laughs> So now we're going to talk about some of you in here. That's it. Let's move on. Yeah, what we have. First question. I'm on the number. I'm on the number. Go ahead. Verse 14. Not giving heed to Jewish favor. Uh, I'll show you what it is, Matthew. Jewish favor. Right. A favor was a myth. Right. Jewish is this is the only time you find Jewish in the Bible. Right. The word following is faith. So not giving heed to Jewish faith. Right. And commandments of men. Commandments of who? Men. Commandments of men is a preacher telling you what you ought not do. But you say, but I looked in the scripture. Sus, sus, sus. <laughs> I've been anointed by God. You dare leave right. all me and the rest of the scriptures. <laughs> That's why they say my pastor say it's not what the thus saith the Lord. Right, right, Down right. here we practice thus saith the Lord, and you need to be able to turn to it. Thus saith the Lord in Isaiah 13. We can't say, thus said the brothers that were sitting at the front table. <laughs> 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 the well, the two of them with reds up here at the table, which one? But if you teach it, thus said the Lord, they may be in, out of contact. But this will always be in contact. Most times it's going to be right near you. If you got a smartphone, you can download that on that. Right. He in the hot sheet joint. It's one in the drawer. I don't care what you at these scripts today. Family dollar. Five dollars a piece. They are around. They right near it to you. They ain't never been taken away from us because there be no excuse on judgment day. I did not have your word, Lord. Now, the word tells us that they, they're going to take them from us. But at this time, most I say, I'm giving you enough time to put it right here. They know 120 years. While the ark was built, the same way he was building for 120 years. Get right with the Lord. Get right with the Lord. 120 years, and they still they like this. It's crazy. You're building a boat on dry land. The ocean is 10,000 miles away. This Negro's crazy. Talking about a flood. <laughs> Bring me some more of that. <laughs> oh, y'all you know, have to understand he's giving us time to get it right that's what grace is grace don't mean we can keep sinning grace means whatever's plaguing you that sin that's hard to shake that sin that you try to find an excuse for to keep doing he's giving you time to get that one right these other ones you just get through with them I ain't even more poor these is right uh, I, I, I ain't uh, I ain't uh, it. but that one that one on the other side of midnight. When you think all is serious, and you so light on your toes, it's <laughs> that, that's the one he said you gotta come clean with first before he accepts any of the others. Let's get some more of that. That's it. Go ahead. Sorry about that, brother. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. The scriptures are only reading now. Uh, some preachers are gonna be reading it to make sure that they read. All right, now, what might be some of the uh, the uh, explanations they might give as far as the explanation that we give? When you're saying which one particular? Particular one, uh, 11, specifically. Who, who miles must be stopped to subvert whole houses? Yeah. 
He stayed there for filthy little sake. They won't touch. That's the one they skip over. See, this is the key. Have you heard it being read in your existence in church? This is what y'all been saying. They have skipped over scripture. They're not going to leave themselves. And it's like, y'all, y'all have to understand this. This will happen with us. If you see something you're doing, and we avoid those as second witnesses, then you're doing the same thing they do. Yep. You got to sting to you too. That's why I want to hear that you before 12. You, you have to, other, it has to sting to you too. So you will stop what you're doing. But if we turn the corner, and we know this one, well, I, I'm going to break them off with this, but I ain't going to dare touch them. That scripture's over there. They're going to put me on front street. And I'm not here to be put on front street. I'm after them. <laughs> So, y'all, this is what it means. So they will cut them off, or if you do the same thing in your teaching. We're not just talking about them. We're talking about teaching the gospel of Christ, especially they of the circumcision. They don't know they're circumcision. So what we have to look out for is it coming from the groups that know who we are first, and then them. They have a Gentile mindset. Right, exactly. They don't think they're the circumcision. We're Gentiles. <laughs> My mom was born in Mississippi. Her daddy in Alabama, close together. A Jew. He's an American. Come on. This is funny. It's literature in the Bible. It's cute in the Bible. It's cute. But an Israelite? No. That's coming from our, those of, but our people, the ones that know we Israelites. Those are the ones you got to be watching and seeing if they make an excuse for bad behavior. Because you're going to be lumped in with them. We ain't going to be lumped in with church people. Who are we going to be lumped in with? Same. The right. ones out on the corner now in them Power Ranger uniform. <laughs> White folks is the devil. Every last one of them. You black women are the devil. And then, um, next thing they know, they swiping an EBT card. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that'll yeah. be all. <laughs> oh, you want to play with the devil's money. And down there sitting with the ashy jobs. I ain't worked in a year. <laughs> I got five wives and ain't worked in a year. Yes, six of the month will do me just fine. No. That's a hypocrite. You can't blast the system of the government and say it's the devil, and then the same thing is your survival is based on it. You are food stamps. <laughs> Now he got the Hebrews 4. Got the Hebrews 4. Did we finish that? Go finish that out now. We didn't get the Hebrews 4. I want y'all to understand how important Paul say when you rebuke sharply where it has to hit, it will get to this point. If you rebuke yourself sharply, it's going to, you're going to say, I said in my own. Let's get some more. Verse, verse uh, 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. Right. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. If you're not a believer, nothing that you can say is pure. So you have to be careful that you don't cast your pearl before swine. How do you keep trying to convince somebody to say, I don't believe in life? I just don't believe it. You can try and when they tell you, look, I will take that by fall it, bro. Don't even go that far. <laughs> Get these scripts. I'll holler at you later. <laughs> out. At least give him the chance. Don't tell him you would take them scriptures and what you would do with them. No, that's an unbeliever. He's swine. You have to understand that. He don't want to hear the word of the lost swine. You have to look at it like that. And if you keep casting the riches of the scripture in front of somebody who looks at him like a pig, a pig will wallow in mud, get up, eat his food out of the mud, get back in there. You can wash him off. And take them to a uh, 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 county, the fair. At, at county fair, and they'll put a blue ribbon on them. But as soon as he smell mud, he's down in there with the ribbon on him. <laughs> like, look at this. This is called a sow wallowing in the mire. Mire is like the city dump where they take all the trash to. That's what he wallows in. So if you keep putting this on somebody that feels like that, what it's going to do is going to cause you to go crazy. Mm -hmm. And then we know it's personal. Like the scripture tell you, don't reprove a scorn. Don't reprove a scorn. He's a naysayer that you're not ready to try to convince him. He's still naysaying. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Waste your time. Kick rocks. You out here for the lost sheep of Israel. You're not out here to go back and forth and battle with somebody when you can convince that this is the word of God. Right. You don't get it. It may not be for you. 
We be wasting our time trying to convince bullet head Negroes right. that the Bible is real. Look, you don't believe it. You don't see the sun come up every morning. You don't see the wind blow. You don't see the wars going down. That's on you, man. I'm not going to lose sleep trying to convince you. You was born in 1985. What's next? Who wrote the Bible? Did white man wrote the Bible? He's like, well, they wrote the. They wrote the yellow pages. You still up in that? <laughs> they wrote your birth certificate. You can present that as the truth. Right. Mm. Yes, Lord. Up in the phone book using Google all that. Verse 6, now, the end of verse 15. But even their mind and conscience is defied. They profess that they know God. Mm -hmm. But in works, they deny Him, being abominable mm -hmm. and disobedient. And unto every good work, reprobate. It's a reprobate, reprobate. or reprobate mind. Reprobate mm -hmm. mind to say, to tell, cash flow to tell any long members that left this church and came to this one, go back over there. He just had a wreck. Yeah, whatever. He ain't acknowledged the wreck. No, he You're saying he had a wreck. He ain't saying it. He paid out of court, too. If you hear it, get out of here and go back I over there. That. He's still going to the kingdom of God. Now you That's a you. reprobate mind. The Bible said you better off you wasn't born. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Than taking a child in his innocence. Absolutely. Give me some Hebrews 4.12. We got to understand what rebuke sharp means. Y'all, we have to understand that it ain't going to never be personal. If you cutting somebody down for somebody else, look, ha, well, cut him down in front of all his balls. If you don't cut him down so that he comes to the knowledge and understanding of Christ, it's personal, and you full of BS. You have to gain his, him to, to show that's on your record, works of righteousness to say he brought in 50 souls while he was alive. If you're using this to cut somebody down because they're a different faith and they never see this, that's a disservice to this word. You're losing souls versus gain. Let's get some more. Hebrews, wait. Hebrews 4, verse 12. Everybody up. Hey y'all, we'll write them scripts down, y'all, too, so y'all y'all put them up. And y'all understand this. We talk about what they're going to teach tomorrow. They get one script and they put the Bible back up when they get home. They just kind of show people. If you're just taking notes and you ain't looking at these notes between now and next Sabbath, you're wasting your time, too. The word ain't one day a week for us. It ain't just Sabbath teaching. 24-7. It's 24-7. You need to be studying this so that you get sound that you can teach somebody. You ain't be able to teach them one day a week. I mean, if you're not going back to it, you just got notes. These notes have to be transferred in here. You got to study your notes. It's just like in school. You take right. notes to study your notes, or you can pass the test. Same thing. Let's get it. Hebrews 4, set verse 12. For the words of Yahweh God is quick uh -huh. and power and sharper than any two-headed sword, piercing and even to the divine asunder of soul and spirit, uh -huh. and of the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intent of the heart. Understand what this just said. It just said the word of God is so powerful it cuts down through the spirit. Y'all seen the word flesh in that? So it's dealing with the inner man. The most high said, I want to get on the inside and see what you're thinking. You can fake that outside. You can put a priest collar on. You can be rubbing rosary beads. You can have menorahs all through your house, but that's on the outside. The most I say, I need to get down inside of her where all the wickedness come from, from the heart. Because the heart is desperately wicked. So the most high saying, this is how far it's going to cut through the spirit and the soul, even the marrow of the bone. You got bone right there, your leg bone. In the middle of that bone is DNA, blood or whatever it looks like. 
You ever been just chicken was so good you just couldn't stop keep going and then finally bite through the bone? <laughs> And that little soft stuff in the middle, that's marrow. Mm. The most high say his sword is so sharp, it cut down his backs. It divides the soul from the spirit. So if you got a bad spirit on you, it will separate that bad spirit out of you. It can't do that on the outside of flesh. That's why flesh ain't mentioned in here. So y'all, that's what you can sharply. When you put the words of Christ on them, it should cut down there. And they will tell you, hey, boys, I feel that. I don't know what you say, that's what. That's how some of the thoughts are. That's in, 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 let me go get my Bible. <laughs> hey, I see my Bible too. <laughs> that's when you know that you do that. But that you know it didn't cut deep and it was for free. Right. Let's get some more of this. What we back? Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10. Y'all think we finna get in the garden. We're gonna spend this last hour and a half. There's some very important things to understand the different doctrines out there about what went on in the garden. A lot of apple eating talk. Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm starting verse 4, y'all. 4 to 10. Back up the brother the saying, about the rebuking sharp and also the rebuilding. That's right. We heard Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse 4. 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Uh huh. Before I formed thee in the belly, right. I knew thee. Right. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. And understand this. This don't mean you were born righteous. What this means when the Most High say before you were formed in the womb, I knew it because the Most High knows what spirit he's going to use for that feast. Right. So he said, I'm going to give that seed his, his spirit. So he knows his spirit. When you die, your soul goes to sleep. But your spirit, according to the Ecclesiastes that explains death, says the spirit goes back to God and he gives it to somebody else. That's how John the Baptist had the same spirit of Elijah. And they thought he was Elijah. They said, oh, you Elijah. He told them, no, I ain't Elijah. I'm just using, I'm borrowing that same spirit. Elijah had it. He would pronounce judgment. You know, he would tell you, pronounce righteous judgment, I should say. From thus saith the Lord. Samuel had it. That spirit. And when they depart and they soul go to rest, it the show don't stop. One monkey don't stop no show with this unless it's a one monkey show. He gives that spirit to somebody else. To keep doing the to work. To keep doing the work. That ain't reincarnation, no. Because John the Baptist said, for those who try to use and say, see, John the Baptist was alive. What did they ask John the Baptist? Oh, Are you alive? And how did he ask? No, I'm not. No! I'm the one crying in the wilderness. Right. You own the wrong prophecy, brother. <laughs> so we uh, that's clear. So this is what that means. When he knows you, he knows what spirit, because he's talked to the mother. When the angel came to Samson's mother in, in, in uh, uh, Judges 16, don't eat nothing unclean. Don't put this in you. The son that's going to be born in you is going to be a Nazarite. I'm going to put my spirit on that fetus in the womb. He's going to want to do this. But to tell you that Samson fell off though. He got caught up. Satan still got next to him. Everything the Lord told him not to do, Samson started doing it because he got too cocky in his power. I mean, you kill a thousand of men, you looking for something, it's a thousand soldiers coming at you. And you just looking around, you like, I don't feel like just knocking them out. Oh, there's the old joke on the Right. <laughs> and they just charge. <laughs> <laughs> a thousand of them with just that spit they mean in those y'all seen them movies. Uh, where they just crop me in and sit around the room. But yet, Delilah, which he married, that he knew was a heart. But he said, I need to marry her anyway. And kept his head laying on her lap. She just rubbed in his head. Pillow talk, right. Tell me your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> if a man buys my hands, 
Well, you like Buckley too, that. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that's where he kept his head. You lying to me. You don't love me. You nope. love your God more. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. what he should have said. Yeah. But he did. Yeah. It didn't have nothing to do with him getting his hair cut off and his strength was in his hair. That's how he was. The order of a Nazarite, which he was in number five, tell you, they can't cut their hair. Number six. Number six. They can't have no razor come upon them. They can't do this. They can't come by a dead body. Samson was into all of that. He was breaking them left and right. Satan is playing with them. Because he got so cocky in his in his strength, the Holy Spirit on. I, I wrestled a lion down like I would a pup. I'm not a big old beast jumped on himself and that lion hurt. <laughs> <laughs> same way, same thing happened to Satan. We read in Ezekiel 28, 20. He was up there. He was in an anointed church, but he got too much pride. That was the only thing. Satan was to the women Denzel and all of the handsome men combined in <laughs> To the men, he was, because we can't say another man look good, he's like, he's all right, he got some money. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way he was when that bride got next to him. <laughs> Let's just go Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1, verse 6. Then said I, I, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Uh -huh. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. What did he say he's going to do? He's going to do what to him? Whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. The Most High gives us commands, laws, statutes, and judgments. He don't give us opinions. He don't give us the ten suggestions. <laughs> he gives us the ten commandments. And that's what he did. He was going to tell everybody else. It ain't changed. Christ said, I'm the same yesterday as today. It don't change. Ain't no new laws coming across the book. It don't change. The only difference is we ain't sacrificing out. We taking it directly to Christ. That's the only order in the, in the law, statute, and judgment of God. It's the priest. The priest change. Then we go straight to the Messiah who pleads for us to the Father, who keeps our names written in the book of life when it's about to be like this, striped out, and Christ said, Holy Father, that you gave me is a worthy servant. <laughs> Any other way up is a robber and a thief. You can't go up. Muhammad ain't gonna be able to wait a minute, Lord. He's like, wait a minute, Muhammad, what you doing showing up here anyway? <laughs> Buddha? What you doing up here, Buddha? <laughs> no other way but through the Savior of the world of mankind. We ain't talking about white Jesus. And we ain't talking about black Jesus. We're talking about the lion of the tribe of Judah. Worthy to be called that. Sitting on the right hand of the Father. Now, if you believe in any other doctrine, if you believe in, you in the wrong class down here. That's what we just have to take. Or you have to prove that everything we just said, he's an imposter according to this record. Don't care about no other books, what the other books say. Prove it in here, because this says it's absolute 100% truth. Don't want to hear white man wrote. Show me what white man wrote. <laughs> what a white man wrote his own destruction means. The Chinese wrote they did destruction. Everybody that do disobedience to the will of God includes everybody, even the white man. So if he writes his own death sentence, well, that's a white man I need to trust. <laughs> Put it on himself first. Right. Let's get some more of that. Verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Most I say, don't care how they scowl. Scowl is like Joe Frazier. Don't care. Tell them the truth. Right? You can't be scared. You can't be scared. Go ahead. Verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. You see how the Most High just put his spirit on him. It's the same way when Mary went to her cousin Elizabeth when she was pregnant six months with John the Baptist. 
as soon as she showed up with Christ in her belly, Elizabeth John the Baptist jumped in her belly. She like, oh, my, my baby filling you. Disconnect. At that point, John the Baptist was baptized by Christ, and they both was in their mother's womb. Where's that? In uh, chapter 1. Yeah, that's my part. Right there. The boy's soft and swift. Verse 13. Verse 13. Verse 13. See I, see, I have this day set thee over the nation and over the kings right. to root out uh -huh. and to pull down right. and to destroy and to throw down, uh -huh. to build and to plant. That's the key words right there, right. to build and plant. Once you get rid of it, it's like this, old dilapidated house, they turn them down. But you need to rebuild something right there. Or you leave what's called a sore spot. If you go out there and you break somebody down and you leave them like an old condemned house and walk away for others to point at it and laugh right and mock it. No, if you're going to tear that down, feel it back up. You know what used to be here? A mother. The man says, right. Okay. Now, he teaches the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. You need to stop in there. You can't make it up. You can stop in there. They teach the gospel of Christ in there. So yeah, that's what I we got this right thing. Go ahead. Can you uh, explain the you know when the church speak about the Trinity me? I was trying to explain it to my mother. Could you explain that it's just not one person? The Trinity? Yeah. Well, one John five tells us what the Trinity is. What the first thing you have to understand, the word Trinity ain't in the Bible. That, that at all. Don't right. twist that up. But what we're talking about is their what's called their Trinity. What you have to get understood first is what the Bible calls Three that are right. So when you hear the word Trinity, you got to say, oh, do you mean the Godhead or the three that bear record in heaven? See, you have to get them back off of this word, which is tied to commandments of me, back to the Godhead. What you saying, Dre? Okay, three that bear record. That's what's in the Bible. This is where you got to redirect them. You can't explain this from the commandments of God. You can explain this. Let's stick with the word. If they bring this to you, correct this word. It's like rapture. Oh, you mean the great gathering? Spoken of in 2 Thessalonians, Jeremiah 3. The great gathering you speak of. After the tribulation. After the tribulation. Oh, okay. After. Right. See, that eliminates this commandment of this where you will escape tribulation. Just somehow because you say, oh, I believe, Lord, I believe in Jesus. Yes. And then you get a pair of wings, and right before you see the collapse of the stock market, you get some wings, and then you go. <laughs> <laughs> I believe, though. And you fly on off up into heaven somewhere. No. So, so Those are faith. So, where is it in the Bible about the Godhead or the, the three that bear red? Let's get there. Romans yes. chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 and 1 John 5. Y'all, then we got to move on to the top. Romans, what matter? What you got? Romans chapter 1, uh, verse 20. Verse uh, 20. Colossians 2 and 9. Colossians 2 and 9. Yeah, Acts 17 and 29 as well. Okay, y'all, getting it up, loading it up. Acts what? 17 what? 29. 29. You got the first John. <laughs> first John. One, one John. Yeah, one John right. knocks it, you know, to the point where it talks about, but all of it's the same thing. It's just multiple witnesses uh, that's explaining the three that bear record. We got to stick with, because see, you got Israelites groups out there that don't believe Christ was born of a virgin birth. Y'all talking about the Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception ain't written in here. The virgin birth is written in here. The Immaculate Conception deals with a son uh, born who ends up Bone in his bone in his oh, well, ooh, boy. Children. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't recorded in here, not with the virgin birth. That's the immaculate conception. So even if our brothers say that you have to get back and tell us, I'm speaking of the virgin birth. Right. Which is not incest. It's not incest. There's no lust involved with this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it like this. <laughs> well, we deal with these guys all the time. They try to, you know, right. say that we compromise because we teach that Christ's mother was a virgin. The most I tell us to look at nature. There's a term called parthiogenesis. A term that where certain species of the have 
what they call virgin, it's called the virgin uh, 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 conception, even happening throughout animals. They happen with the birds and the bees. This is why the term, when you always ask your mom, well, it's the birds and the bees, is saying no physical intercourse happened. But we never looked at it like that. But when you look up how birds and bees made certain ones, no male around. You have to understand that they were. And, and, and bees take pollen from this plant and put it to this one, and that one blossom, so it moves the seed. If you look and you accept that in a corner life, and you won't accept this on a spiritual level, but you believe Christ will resurrect and sit on the right hand of the Father, but natural things you won't believe, and then you get down to the virgin birth because a man told you it's the immaculate conception, you're not on your game. You are studying the doctrine of immaculate conception. They convince you that that's written in here. Nowhere in here Christ makes love to his mother at all. Nor to the spirit of He gives her love, which is the keeping of the commandments. But no, it ain't no hanky panky. <laughs> no, these ain't the trail of park scriptures. <laughs> well, they'll teach that they say the virgin birth came from Nimrod and his mother. Right. But you do any history, you know, Nimrod had relations with his mother. Right. And then they had a son. Yeah. Right. So then that, that uh, worship was passed down into Egypt, Isis. Right. And Horus, and it was passed into Greece. You know, so every nation that bounces changed names, changes colors, or whatever. But so one thing don't change. Relationships with the muff. Right. According to this, that can't be found in the with Christ and his muff. Right. So then they add the virgin birth hundreds of years later. And now I've got people thinking that that got to do with the scripture. Right. They added to that they little pagan deity, but right. it started out as a son having relations with his mother. Right. It didn't start out as the Holy Spirit overshadowing Samaritans or Isis or any of them so-called goddesses that everybody tries to say that's where it comes from. No. It didn't start like that. The origin of it was incest. That's right. A mother and a son getting together to have another son. Leviticus 18 chapter. Do not approach your mother. Son, do not approach your father's wife. That makes you an MF. A MF? Right. Let's get it so y'all, we, we get in there and we're going to see what the scriptures say. Y'all, this is what we have to go off so we don't get caught up and you get caught up battling and you get caught into philosophy. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So you don't want to start and then you have people, well, uh, we don't debate the scripture. How about reproof and correction? And you, got, you got other people that say, you know, that, that ain't as radical as these other cats, but they'll tell you, well, it ain't no three in the God here, it's just two. And the Holy Spirit is Gabriel the angel. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So you start hearing all type of stuff, but uh, you got to filter it with the script. Right. It's and, first, go ahead. Bro. And Gabriel is saying, the Holy Spirit, I'm just giving you a message. It's coming. Right. Don't right. you think his God, man, he says, don't be me? That's what Marlon and I'm going to overshadow you. That, that, that the Holy Spirit right. is Gabriel, the author, one of the angels. I'm going to overshadow you. No, Gabriel ain't never said it. <laughs> first John, chapter 5, verse 7. First John, 5 and 7. But there are three. How many? There are three. There are two. There are three. There's one. There are three. There's two combined in one. There are three <laughs> that bear a record in heaven. That's right. The Father, uh -huh. the Word, uh -huh. and the Holy Ghost. So we see that there's three that all work one, but they three separate entities. They do the will like, of the Father. Right. When a man and a woman, they become one flesh. Mm -hmm. Two separate individuals, mm -hmm. but you become one. And then they're keeping the order of the head, which is the Father. That's right. And these three are one. Right. That's it. Man. Go ahead and read the next one. So when they say that these yeah, three are one, that means it's Well, they think alike. Like, it's like when you get in, we go, we hit a bunch of 1 Corinthians 12. All of this will help you understand that those three are individual, but they work one. That 1 yeah. Corinthians 12, get down to the Spirit and say, if all were the hand, what would be the foot? Okay. If all were this, works up? So he gives different gifts out to everybody, but it works the same thing, the gospel of Christ. Right. This is what kills the Pentecostal doctrine. They say unless you speak in tongues, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Well, 1 Corinthians 14 say, he that prophesied is greater than he that speaketh in tongues. So they got a problem with their doctrine. Mm -hmm. So they never teach their congregation 1 Corinthians 14. Mm -hmm. They shy away from it. Mm -hmm. 
We don't want to have to answer them questions. Go ahead, man. Write that down, write that down sister. A, a deep understanding on what that one means. That oneness is John, the Gospel of John, chapter 17, uh -huh. verses 21 through 23. That's right. And that's where Christ explained what it is to be one. Right. And what he's meaning by that. There are three that bear record, and these three are one. And y'all see, understand what's happening here is that whatever question you got is being answered. Scripturally. Not he thought and he's thinking about something. He's telling you directly where to go look. So in case anybody asks you the same question, you go right there too. But you have to know it and understand it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it real quick for y'all. John 17 and 21. I'm going to start at verse 20. It says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be one. That they may all be one. That they all may be one. Right. As as thou father are in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Right. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Absolutely. So y'all see how clear that cleared that up. But it, it left no stones unturned of where you can try to figure all these combined to one because it now includes us into that. Into that God if, if we believe. Y'all may be one. What you got, brother? One accord. That's like where in verse 9 where he's praying for his disciples and that continues down it's just to say to sum it up to say that they all on the same team they all on the same page everybody has to be on the same page it's a team look the quarterback can't do what the tight end is doing he can't throw the ball and then streak down the field and catch it too unless he's he's in free to natural you know that where he throws the ball and he outrun his own receiver no, everybody got their role that they play. They are one team. But they one team. Defense, no, we're not going to get the glory of this person. I'm not going to get what a running back get. He's going to be, you know, MVP. It's, it's like the heat of it, not to reduce it to those levels, but where you can understand it. Dwayne Wade, like, look, yeah, I was the captain by LeBron here. I got my role. He got his role. But what's the end? The championship trophy. We win, right. We are one. What you got, brother? Like when, uh... When a man and a woman marry, they become one. They're absolutely. But they're not one. They're not one that you're looking at them, but right. this is why the courts can't force your wife to testify against you. Right. You won. They can't say, you're going to come in here, you're going to tell us if Willie been selling that dope. <laughs> <laughs> they say, I don't have to tell you anything. You can't put me on the stand. Right. So they get into trickery. What they do, well, okay. Throw them photos down right there. Really and there you smile. <laughs> with another woman. <laughs> that child without a father ain't been married. <laughs> Mother. Who? The dope that's safe in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> and he got the money over his grandma. <laughs> Black mother. <laughs> that's what they do. And then you testify against your oneness. Let's move on. Where we at? Uh, we we in our role in that. No, you hit that one job. We hit the one job. But I want you to hit that next verse. Verse okay. 8. Verse 8. Because it talks about what's on earth. Okay. Verse John 5 and 8. Yeah. And there are three that bear witness in earth. Uh -huh. The spirit. Right. And the water. Right. And the blood. Right. And these three agree in one. So think about this. Spirit, blood, and water. Mm -hmm. Are they the same thing on planet earth? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Without blood, can you live? I mean, you can... You need blood to live, but without spirit, it's only dead. Yeah. Huh? Water. Without water, you can't live. Mm -hmm. Everything needs water. Mm -hmm. But Christ takes it to another level. He said, I'm water that you will never thirst again. This water, we're going to keep on thirsting, but we got to have this. 80% of our body is made up of this. When you, when you get thirsty, you already dehydrate. You have to understand that. You should never be thirsty. You already Dehydrate. Go ahead. And another uh, great analogy is uh, that First Corinthians chapter three. We're going. We're going there. Okay. Go ahead and read out. We got and this, this again it says it with, with that on one accord in uh, verse First Corinthians. First Corinthians 
chapter 3, uh -huh. uh, verse starting at verse 5. Okay. And it's Paul when he said, Who then is Paul? Right. And who is Apollos? Right. But ministers by whom ye believe. Right. Even as the Lord gave to every man. He gave to who? To every man. Like what you said. Or in St. Louis, every man. Right. So he said that everybody, you know, go ahead, he ain't, okay. he ain't just gave it to nobody. What he said, he gave it to every man that's willing to accept. Go ahead. Verse 6. Uh -huh. I have planted. Right. A polished water. Y'all hear that? This brother dropped the seed. This brother keep you going on. But. God gave the increase. Who gave the increase? God. We can't never, that means we can't never puff ourselves up. Yeah, if it wasn't me, he wouldn't know nothing. Right. He's learning that. Who you think he learns something? <laughs> <laughs> you get beside yourself like that, where you get your learning from? Because it said the word is taught. You were taught. Go ahead, Gaddy, wait, finish it up. Verse 7. Uh -huh. So, so neither is he that planted anything. Right. Neither he that watered it. Right. But God that giveth the increase. Now he that planted it and he that watered it are one. Oh what? Oh, one. one. Say it again, get it. Verse 8. Now he that planted it and he that water it are uno. Right. <laughs> like that. So right. So like that. <laughs> and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Uh -huh. For we are all laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Y'all hear that? That's a plain clip. Love that, kid. All that's praise to the most high. Y'all yeah, yeah, know what we got talking about. Serve. Add to where we at so that you get clear understanding and nobody can overwhelm you with their opinion. <laughs> Come on, sister. <laughs> Think about this just for a minute. You're a realistic person. You graduated from high school. <laughs> you have a PhD. Your heart is wicked. Right. Right. <laughs> All of that even goes into more witnesses of the Bible about the Godhead or what we call the three that bear record. Right. Trinity is a man-made title for it. So it, it makes you dabble into another doctrine if you're not understanding. Catholic doctrine. The Catholic doctrine. See, because they three bear, because they call the Pope the Holy Father. Exactly. He's Christ on earth. And all of his henchmen are... The, the spirit and the other things. So that's why you go to him in a closet. The Gambino family. Yeah, just slaying all of the this other Italian family. Say three Hail Marys, leave about a million dollars, and you send them to give it. And they come right out of there. Yeah, just to forgive it by the father. You <laughs> think the murder has been taken away in, in up at the judgment throne? No. Let's get smoked.